Every year, peony season comes and goes before I even feel like I've had sufficient time to soak it all in. Although peony season could last half the year and I'd still be left artistically wanting. And so a few years ago, I started taking almost dead blooms and giving them a second life. I called this series or technique, whatever you want to call it, watercolor fragments. So come along with me. I'm going to pick some peonies for today and I'll tell you more. I've even taught a creative bug class where we create one watercolor fragments composition a day for 30 days. What a journey. Check the link below if you're interested in more details on that adventure. So this technique, it's basically a painting sculpture hybrid where you create a three dimensional composition on a flat surface. It's made up of real flower parts, scrap paper bits, and painted strokes on the paper. Now don't worry, I have an answer for that question already plaguing you. But what happens to what we created when the real stuff wilts and dies? Don't worry, I've got you, I'll explain soon. Let's take a look at the supplies we need. From years of creating these watercolor fragments compositions, I've saved little hand cut petals and leaves and things, so I'm pulling those out. I'm gonna use my half inch dagger and the liner brush, of course, because what would a painting day be without the liner brush? A pencil, whatever you love, a little bit of scissor action, grab the palette that you're most excited about today, and I might be bringing in this bleed proof white, we shall see. I've got one of my peonies I picked a few days ago, and she's kind of on her way out, so maybe I'll use her. Maybe I'll use some of these others that are sitting off to the side of me that are looking a little now fair warning your painting desk is going to be a hot mess at the beginning and definitely as you work through and at the end of this project so just sink into it accept it and you may also want to have a big very clean brush something you know even that you would paint the walls with that you can brush away debris as you work that's a helpful thing that i forgot to mention initially all right here is a peony i just pulled it out of the water she's been sitting for a few days and you can see her petals are just starting to really droop so what i like to do to start off a composition is choose a big bold bloom or at least the center of a bloom, snip off so it's flat on the bottom, and then I typically remove any petals that are just really in bad shape. And this is going to be the start of my composition. So just a reminder, this composition is three-dimensional when it's all said and done. So I do have a special way that we are going to memorialize what we create at the end, so stick around. Now, this is when I start digging through all of my old scraps of petals. Now, I've been doing these for a while, so I have a bunch of these petals already existing, but you can just make some new ones. All right, now I've got this big gaping hole where I pulled off some of the petals. I'm gonna go ahead in and paint a petal using the tip of my dagger brush, holding it at about a 30 degree angle. And as that flower sits there, Keeping my hand on top of it so it doesn't move too much, I'm going to add that petal in. I dabbed in a little bit of bright red over top of that initial pink that I created the petal shape with. And now I immediately wanna go in and add this big, beautiful pink paper petal that I created at some point in the past and add that in. Here's the thing about these watercolor fragment compositions. Honestly, there's a lot of things. So I'm probably gonna be saying here's the thing a lot you're constantly gonna be working back and forth. What do I mean by that? You're going to add things, then you're gonna bump the flower and everything's gonna move and you're gonna to have to reset everything. I don't glue anything down and honestly, that's by design. It's part of the process. It keeps you in the moment, it keeps you on your toes and just try doing this outside when there's wind blowing. That's a fun challenge. You're also gonna to wanna to take time for sure, especially if you're sitting while you're doing this, to stand up and look at how things are unfolding from a top-down angle, because that's essentially the angle from which this composition will be experienced. Now I'm adding another petal here at the bottom right, using a lot more red this time, but basically I'm making a half round shape that's imperfect and then filling it with more color and spreading that color around with water. This is something I love to do to just put a little tiny sliver 
of a painted petal peeking out from behind the real petal and that gives such drama and depth. You can approach this like you would a quote unquote real painting when you're thinking about shadows and how to build depth. All the same applies. I wanted some of those top real flower petals to pop so I added some dark watercolor painted petals behind them on the page. One tip that's important with these paper bits that you might add, make sure you curl them a little bit. When they're still wet, curl them around your brush and don't worry about messing up the watercolor that you just painted on or getting fingerprints on them. You can always brush out some of those imperfections that happen from rolling the petal around your brush. But you want a little bit of curl and curve because that's going to really push the trick of the eye that happens with these compositions. What's real? What's paper? What's painted? It's really fun to show someone this and have them try to pick it out. They usually don't get it right. All right, on the right hand side here, I'm layering another petal. It is about a third view petal, so you can only see about a third of the full petal because it's underneath all of the petals that I've added, whether real or painted. Just a really light pink and blending it out towards the center or the other petal that I painted to get that nice light to dark. Friends, if you're curious about the basics of watercolor painting, I have a video I'm gonna link below and it talks about all of these techniques that I use, not only in this session, but in all of my sessions. It's kind of like the watercolor mastermind. Go ahead and check it out. And while we're at it, since I'm starting leaves, I'm gonna link a really fun leaf video below, maybe a couple. And uh, definitely check those out because leaves, if you can paint them, you can paint anything. My suggestion for your first watercolor fragments is paint the leaves that you love, paint the ones that you're used to painting that you're comfortable with. Same goes for petals. Don't try to reinvent the wheel with your first watercolor fragments experiment because you're already gonna have a lot on your plate that's new and weird and yeah. So don't go and get super cray cray with adding new techniques that you're not familiar with as well. All right, I added in a real leaf. I pulled from, I don't know, uh, some bush off of my property today. I just love the dark, intense green of it. And then here at the bottom, underneath that peony, I added another little cluster of real leaves. Now I'm starting to get a sense of structure. And remember, friends, if you, a few minutes from now, don't like the structure, don't like where you placed those real leaves, you can move them. But it's important as you're working to get elements down, just like in a real painting where it's all brush strokes on the page, it's important to kind of map out the possibilities. The thing I love about watercolor fragments, it's easy to change your map as you go. Love it. All right, press, drag, and lift with two greens on my brush. Literally dab green once and then pick a second green and dab in there a second time without rinsing in between. Then you'll have a double loaded brush and in two or three strokes, you'll have a gorgeous press, drag and lift leaf. Continuing to add elements, it's all about play and experimentation. Lay down different real elements, cut yourself some new petals or leaves with scrap paper, add things, take them away, move things. Even at this stage, friends, I could go as far as completely moving that peony. Those petals would still work if I twisted that peony, say, you know, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, counterclockwise, clockwise, they would still work. So give yourself that freedom with these compositions. Don't be afraid to make major changes along the way because 99% chance they're gonna work just fine. Now, I have this little dahlia. It was not dying. I plucked it right from the pot, but she's just so darn pretty, I wanted to use her, so it's okay. Now, the same applies here, friends. You might think, whoa, gosh, why would you snip a flower that was in its prime knowing that in a few hours it's gonna be dead on your page? Friends, trust me, this is part of the process. This is part of allowing yourself to do things that are uh, slightly subversive, that feel really good, really, really good for the creative soul. And trust me, that yellow flower is not wasted. You'll see soon. I'm gonna go ahead and set her off to the side, grab a yellow that speaks to me quickly, and then do a few press, drag, and quick lift petals around an imaginary center. 
press, drag, and lift. Sometimes I'm adding two strokes right next to one another. Press, drag, and lift. I added a little bit of an orangey yellow this time to keep things interesting. See, I'm dipping right back into that palette, not rinsing my brush. If you're new here and you're screaming, what are you doing? You're making your palette a dirty mess. I want you to watch the video below on how I encourage you to not rinse your brush too much. Check it out. I've added that yellow bloom on top of all those painted petals. This almost looks like a columbine. It goes from a dahlia to look like a columbine with a few additional strokes, and I am not unhappy about it. Now I'm grabbing that orangey yellow, going in between, holding my brush at a slight angle so that my bristles are uh, kind of twisty and not perfectly flat to the page, if that makes sense. Take a look at how I'm holding that brush. I'm doing one stroke in between each of those yellow petals I initially laid down to add some additional ruffliness, petaliness, loveliness to this crazy hybrid flower. Just a reminder, I'm removing that yellow bloom because I wanna get in here and get some detail done. I'm using the very tip of my dagger brush with a very, very, very light touch if you haven't done this technique before, grab a scrap piece of paper and practice keeping your hand loose and adding those light touches of linear detail. Practice really helps if this is a new technique for you. All right, putting that yellow flower back on. Happy, happy. I have a few yellow paper scrappy blooms laying around, so I gotta get them in there. And this leaf, this leaf right here, friends, is one of my favorites. It appears in so many of my watercolor fragments, and I hope I never, ever, ever, ever lose her. Oh my gosh, friends, that's another fun thing about watercolor fragments is that you can save the paper elements and use them again and again. And it's like your, your, your artwork has a little thread, a story, a history that pops up in each of them. All right, here I'm showing you how to paint yourself a little petal. Just cut a petal shape from a scrap piece of watercolor paper, paint on some loveliness with your watercolor brush, Please don't be precious about it. Just get it on there, get her done. I'm adding a bright orange to add some quick dimension. Yes, my hands are a mess. I have watercolor all over them, but I do not care because it works and it's working for me and it's finding me my joy. All right, I'm gonna cut another one here. I do recommend these tiny, tiny precision scissors. You can search something like vintage reproduction scissors on Amazon. I'll link some information below about that, but they are awesome and they give you so much control. And I'm just gonna go back in and reposition this little bit that I designed for the center or well, just under the center. And just a friendly reminder, because I know the kind of loosey goosiness of this whole process can feel frustrating or stressful. Just remember, you always have plenty of opportunities to move things around, correct things, move things back from whence they came if the wind blows the wrong way. So just sink into the delightfulness of this process and try to push away the worry and the fear that you're going to put something down, it's going to move, and you're going to be sad about it because it's all okay. All right, I'm here trying to create myself another little epic leaf, and what I did this time is painted it flat, and then I'm cutting it out and I'll do a little bit of rolling for dimension. So you can certainly cut first, paint, and then roll, or you can paint flat, then cut and roll. It's totally up to you and how you work best. Oh, I do love this leaf though. And notice because the paper is wet now, at least on one side, I'm actually going to roll just with my hands, not using a brush because I don't want to disrupt that sweet painting finish at all. While I'm tucking in this leaf, notice I am putting my finger on the center of the yellow flower just to give myself a little bit of strength and resist from that flower or anything surrounding it moving while I tuck that leaf in. I save everything that I come across when I'm pulling natural elements for a watercolor fragments piece. And this little bloom is actually on its way to being dried, but it's super curious and interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead in with a little bit of tan watercolor. If you don't have a pre-mixed convenience tan, 
I would just say grab a little pallet sludge in the corners, water it down a whole lot, and you're gonna probably have something really nice to paint this kind of ivory, tannish looking flower with. Just a few strokes around an invisible center, and yeah. So this is a technique that I use where I'll grab a natural element, place it onto my watercolor fragments composition, and then repeat that element with the paintbrush somewhere nearby or somewhere else in the composition. So it's a, just a great way to approach doing this so you don't feel like you're starting from scratch all the time. Like in the beginning with the peony, I didn't have another peony on the page. Peony was the first thing down and it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm really doing this, I'm starting this. But when you can place a natural element somewhere and then kind of copy it, it, with your paintbrush, it feels a lot less nerve wracking. Something else you can do is actually cut natural elements down, change their shape, see how you feel about it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you might be wondering, Christy, you are making such a freaking mess as you're working through this. You probably have petal scraps in your palette and you would be right. You would be right. Indeed, I do have all sorts of scraps in my palette, but I'm not worrying about it right now. These are held down with magnets. And when I'm all done and that palette is dry after today's painting session, I can just flip her upside down, shake her out over the garbage can and all will be well again. I promise you. Adding a few press, short drag, and quick lift leaves here with the green I have on my brush. Use your favorite, whatever your eye goes to first in the palette. Don't be precious about it. I don't have a lot of water on my brush right now, but I also don't have a lot of pigment, so I'm getting that kind of soft, slightly dry brush effect. All right, it's time to stand up and take a looky-loo at things from the top-down angle to make sure you're happy with the composition overall. And I gotta say, I'm pretty pleased. I've got a big old bold flower, the pink one, that's obviously my main focal point. The yellow flower's got a lot going on on its own, but she's smaller, so she takes second fiddle. Well, she takes the second seat, maybe not second fiddle. I'm going in now with my liner brush, a 60% pigment, 40% water combination. Check the link below if you want to learn how to use this brush and get really, really good at it, you're gonna need to do some liner brush drills. So I'm going through adding color to my brush as needed, started with some yellowy orange to add detailing to that yellow flower. I didn't rinse my brush and dipped into some green, and I'm heading over and adding some details into some of these leaves here. That thin, thick, thin, thick, undulating stroke down the center of this bigger green leaf, and then I'm coming out from it with angled linear detail lines that are a little more consistent in their thickness, which means the pressure I'm applying is more consistent. And I'm letting the paint run out to see what interestingness happens, and I'm glad I did. Add a little wiggle to your liner brush as you stroke it down the surface of an area, and you're gonna get a slightly more interesting mark. Try it. I'm getting that scrap piece of paper out and cut myself another little something something here. And friends, I'm being quick. That was real time. This is a quick cut. Don't overthink it. Any beautiful organic shape can turn into a petal, but guess what? This one's actually not gonna be a petal. I've got something on the brain for the center of this peony. I feel like adding a little bit of ruffle with paper because honestly, that peony is so much real peony. And for me, I wanna make it a little less real peony and a little more mixed media, three-dimensionalness going on. Did that make sense? I hope it did. But anyway, I am creating a ruffly center ring to add around this peony. I'm not quite sure at this point how it's going to play out. I've done these a bunch of times before. Sometimes I'll create literally a ring where the center is cut out and then I do these ruffly cuts. Sorry, I'm going off screen here, but basically I'm adding cut, cut, cut after cut next to one another at different angles with my scissors. And then when I kind of fluff these cuts up with my fingers and make them imperfect and curl them in, they turn into this gorgeous ruffliness that you can add wherever. Just keep snipping, snipping. This takes patience, I'm not gonna lie. It's gonna take you a few minutes, but it is worth changing up the angle of your scissors. It's worth making cuts that are deeper and longer and some that are shorter. And it's worth taking the time to make the thinnest cuts that you can in some areas because the finish that you're gonna get is absolutely incredible. 
Wow, I almost got off my camera, but uh, I didn't think that there were earthquakes in Pennsylvania, but apparently. <laughs> Anywho, you know, it is what it is, friends. Thanks for staying aboard, and I hope I'm not making you seasick. All right, you can test out any shape that you're playing around with. And what do I mean? Add it into the flower where your ideas are taking you. See how it feels before you continue on, because you might make some different decisions once you've kind of tested out the placement. So just like I am now, tested out the placement. Now I've literally got this little center paper thing in here and I'm painting on it. I'm pushing down on it. I'm getting rough with it. I'm using the edge of my brush here to press down as I curl the edges up around the edge of the brush. I like the way this is working. I'm painting. Friends, this is messy. This is crazy. This is chaotic. But that's what makes it so absolutely amazing when you realize something gorgeous is coming out of all of the crazy. All right, I'm liking this, I'm liking this. I'm just trying to remove some of my scraps from the page here. That's where your big clean dry brush or even a small clean dry brush can come in handy when you need to sweep things away that don't belong. All right, let's get in a little bit closer and really see the nitty gritty of what's going on here with the composition. This is kind of the frame. This is where I envision this composition being cut off. So it's helpful for you to see as well what I'm thinking in my brain. I don't know what kind of peony this is. It's been growing in my garden for the last 15 years. I absolutely adore it. It is a peony, but I don't know what the variety is, but it's got these white, well, soft white petals that are extremely organic in their silhouette. Some are skinny, some are not. They um, It almost is like an iris peony hybrid. If you could envision in your head what an iris and a peony that kind of like did the dirty, what that would look like, it's this flower. And I adore it. Now you're probably wondering, well, why are you pulling all the petals off? Because I got me an idea and I'm gonna run with it. I also, even more than the petals, what I love about this flower is the center. The little stamen, ruffly, it almost reminds me of one of those chickens that has those crazy plumes on top of their head, but it's a flower and that makes me so happy. So I actually wanna build my own flower right now. Friends, we are heading into the ultra crazy part of this video where I am going to become a mad scientist and literally build my own flower. I'm only using the center of this peony. It's gonna get good. Hang on to your seats, friends. I will tell you this, this decision is not something I planned. None of this was planned, except that I knew I wanted to do watercolor fragments today when I filmed. But the specifics, especially of this flower, absolutely not planned. I thought for sure that I would probably do some paper petals to tuck in with the real petals because I love the petals so much and I love the shape of them so much. But I don't know what happened to me once I picked up that bloom and was reminded of how much I adore that yellow center. Uh, and, and then I looked over and I have all these beautiful scraps and I still have all these bits that will quote unquote be wasted and end up in the trash can if I don't use them. And I'm like, you know what? I wanna use all of these things and make a flower. Okay, I'm ready to go. I've got my surface cleaned up. I'm gonna lay down a few strokes with my half inch dagger. I've got some opera pink on there and immediately without rinsing went into the buff titanium. Yes, friends, this is my Daniel Smith palette. I haven't mentioned that yet because it's really not important, but unless you're talking about opera pink and buff, then the brand name is important. So I'm going around an invisible center with very, very different shaped brush strokes, creating these long meandering serpentine shape, if you will, strokes of color next to one another. And I'm keeping my brush moving quickly, but calmly to get that full kind of petal situation roughed in and placing my center down, seeing how it feels, seeing how it looks. Don't be afraid to manipulate your natural elements. I went ahead and started kind of spreading, gently spreading out those yellow stamens so you could see more of the crazy beautiful pink moments that are in the middle of this flower center. Going back in, my brush wasn't too wet when I first laid down all these petals, so I'm going back into kind of a, a damp on almost dry situation. 
And now I'm bringing in a really, really intense like red wine color, alizarin crimson, and adding a few moments of that. I need to get into the nitty gritty of the center of this flower. So removing the yellow and I'll bring it back. I'm adding a few strokes, a little wiggles, dashes, different pressure so that I can get some of that color around the center. It doesn't feel like enough. So I'm gonna go back around the yellow and add some more. I don't know, it still doesn't feel like enough. So I gotta, I've gotta keep extending those strokes. These are the kind of snap decisions that you wanna make as you're working through a composition like this. And honestly, you should be making snap decisions when you're working on any composition. That's it, that's all I gotta say about that. Snap decisions are a good, fun thing to do. We all need to, to do more of that. Anywho, adding in a paper petal here. Remember, I have a stockpile of these pre-done petals, and so you might want to create yourself a little stockpile before you try this with me if you're just watching now, planning to paint later. And don't be afraid, if you do have a stockpile of these petals, cut some of the existing ones down. I just cut a little bit of pink off of that big, big petal and added it to my yellow flower. Snap decisions. Oh yeah. Working through this, I am in love. Don't forget to talk yourself up, be kind to yourself. I am in love with this flower I'm building. I have this really incredibly strong pinky red petal and it's giving me that contrast that I was after, that I was trying to accomplish with the paintbrush, but it is just taking it home with this paper petal and I'm super excited about it. But of course, I'm also super excited about the fact that I'm okay being extra and it's time to get extra. I am going into my bleed proof white with my liner brush and I'm going to add some high contrast veins. High contrast, which means a very noticeable difference between what's light and what's dark on any surface. And so these white lines are crazy obvious, hence high contrast gorgeous, not overdoing it, making sure they're not evenly spaced linear details and boom. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. And let me address something because at this moment when I've created this flower that I am absolutely adoring and in love with, adding some more of those dark, dark red moments underneath that paper petal. I like the way that's looking, but back to my point, I do at times in these watercolor fragments, I do honestly get sad. There are moments where I'm like, this flower is only going to exist in this beauty for maybe an hour before things start to look a little meh. And I do, I, I'm not going to lie, I get sad. But then I also have to remind myself, and I do remind myself, that the majority, the vast majority of the benefit, the value, the experience, is the experience. This moment where I am excited and proud of myself and a little sad that this beautiful thing is gonna come to an end as it is now, that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. So much of what is incredible about our lives disappears. It does, it disappears. Oh, but being able to be in the moment, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm like getting a little, a little um, emotional here, but being able to be in the moment and enjoy that fleeting moment that you know is not gonna last makes that enjoyment, makes that joy go through the roof if you let it. All right, I'm gonna stop with my wax and poetic and gonna get back to the painting, I promise. Thanks for coming along with me, friends. And I also promise that I am going to show you exactly how I preserve what I can of this composition. And uh, I think you'll be happy about it. So stick around. Friends, are you having a good time? I gotta know, I gotta know, I gotta know. I think I know, but let me know for sure with a boop, that's a like. And the like here on the YouTubes lets others know that we're having fun and that they need to join in on the fun. And it helps my channel in countless ways. And last and probably least, it makes me feel good. You make my day with every single boop, so thank you. All right, adding in a few more leaves here, friends. I wanna also know too in comments, head to comments now while I'm zhuzhing and figuring things out, what is your favorite flower? 
Is it the big first pink peony? Is it the yellow craziness? Or is it the completely almost built from scratch iris peony hybrid? Tell me which one it is. Is it the pink, the yellow, or the hybrid? Head into comments. I can't wait to see which one wins. All right, I'm gonna continue being extra with this Bleed Proof White. If you don't have Bleed Proof White, I also adore Gesso, watered down white acrylic. You can try this with gouache. Uh, it will certainly work with gouache. And white watercolor would be my last choice because you're not gonna get that contrast as easily. I'm heading into these petals, just having a good time, adding a few moments, some longer, very slow meandering strokes next to one another, and then also some short staccato strokes, as I like to call them, on the edges of some of these petals. And those short staccato in a row strokes on the edges of petals really help the petals appear curved. I'm bringing in also that really deep wine color, the alizarin crimson, or if you just have red, Mix a little bit of red, add some purple, add a skosh of blue, maybe a touch of green, and you're gonna get that dark wine red color. Adding some of that into the linear detail moments at this stage too. All right, this is the point in any painting where I'm so happy, very, very pleased with what I've got going on. But I do feel like I wanna be a rebel. I, I think I've, I've become addicted to risk in my painting and so bring it in the scrap paper actually this isn't really a scrap this is a swatching thing i did a while back uh, me and my crazy swatching if you'd like to know what i mean by crazy swatching i'll link a few videos below but i love this technique take a scrap painting something that makes sense and works color wise so i'm taking the red pinky portion here and add some moments of cut paper detail with that scrap. So I'm gonna create a petal and see how it looks. It's kind of this stripey effect that I've got on my scrap paper. And I'm gonna use some of the, the little moments that are falling away as I cut the bigger petal, adding it to that hybrid flower up in the right-hand corner. Oh yeah, I, this is total happy accident, Bob Ross moment, Bob Ross moment alert probably gonna get in trouble for saying his name. I watched that documentary recently. Oh Lord. Anyway, I digress. This is a Bob Ross moment, I don't care. All right, look at that petal. I'm adding my stripey petal into the center, tucking it under the insane center of that flower and the piece that I trimmed off, I'm also tucking in because that curve that I created with my scissors is just perfect to wrap around the center. Actually, it disappears too much there. I'm moving it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put it on the edge here, but it's still gonna work. Watch, be still, my watercolor heart. Friends, trust me, I have been telling you for a long time to keep your quote unquote bad paintings, keep your failures, put them in a pile because you will use them. This is your moment. This is your moment to redeem all of those paintings that you did not like, frustrated you to no end. This is their moment. And I, you know, I usually say sometimes too much of a good thing is too much. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that that doesn't apply as much to watercolor fragments. Just, just keep going with all those good things. Just be too much here, friends. This is your, this is your place to be way, way too much. Okay, now I'm obsessed with my scraps and I'm going to cut some really, really tiny moments here to accentuate and really draw the eye to the center of that flower. There is actually hot pink, real flower moments happening in the center of that flower, but they're hard to see. So I'm gonna add a few of these scraps in there to really bring it to life. I just can't even with myself. I just can't even with myself right now. I'm very happy, very, very happy. All right, step back, look at what you've done. Just be in the moment and just soak up the gorgeous little world of wonder that you have created. And I know you're feeling sad. It's only gonna last a little while, but surprise, surprise, I've got a little hack for you. Let's get into it. Of course you're gonna take a picture of her. Yes, yes you are. Friends, this is how we memorialize our incredible work. And honestly, I've learned to crave this process. I, not, I don't get too sad anymore. I don't because I know that I get 
to experience this peace, not only in person, but forever and ever, amen, in the photos I take. And so you're gonna grab a bunch of shots. I want you to get the really awesome top-down shot. Make sure that that is in focus. Tap your screen based on the phone that you have. I got an iPhone, so I don't know what your phone needs to focus a photo, but it's probably a tap on the screen. And get different angles, get different orientations, get as many photos as you need. Here is the biggest tip though for this photo hack. The biggest tip, and it's a hack, not because I'm taking a photo, I know that's not groundbreaking. It's a hack, friends, because you're getting to preserve your beautiful artwork. But here is really important point. And I probably should have said this in the beginning, but it is what it is. Take your photo in natural light. Be in front of a window in direct light. You don't wanna be in the hot sun. I mean, if that's all you can get, it's better than nothing. But what you ideally want is to be indoors, that's my opinion. It just, I don't know, I get weird hazes of color when I'm outdoors photographing a lot of things like this. Indoors, in direct light, and you are going to have all you need for an incredible photo. All right, let's get on to editing because I will edit these photos and I'm a little extra. I don't just use my phone editing. I go into an app called Afterlight. And basically what I do is bump up the contrast all the way, typically. And then I bump up the brightness all the way. And sometimes I'll double bump that brightness. Sharpening too, I typically do a little bit of sharpening and then I'll finish and perfect the crop on this piece. And I will repeat this process for every single photo that I took. All right, let's have a look at her. She's lovely. Isn't she lovely? Oh, she is. I broke into song, you know what that means. I am in my joy, I'm in my joy zone. Oh, friends, look at her. Let's just adore what we've done. And I want you to head into comments and let me know, I am trying this for sure or eh, maybe later. All right, so is it a for sure thing that you're trying? Say for sure in comments or maybe later. Either way, I wanna know. And while you're at it, give this video a boop, friends. Thank you so much. Now, if you're anything like me, you wanna see more of this crazy watercolor fragments, wonderful world of watercolor. And so head on over to this playlist because I've got just that for you. And until next time, friends, I hope you find so many happy painting moments.